Warning, if you feel empathy towards cheaters, you shouldn't watch this episode. If you stay, you just found the best place for your vengeful needs. This cheating revenge episode is a dark Christmas special, so be sure to spoil yourself, and stick till the end. The first story is exclusively shared with this channel only. Wife of cheating husband goes nuclear, and publicly promotes his affair partner, to side chick of December. Cheating wife gets caught transferring funds, to her secret lover. Her genius husband finds out, and turns her into a sugar mommy. This story is epic. Next, this woman had one rule. Don't cheat, don't ever cheat. So when he cheated nonetheless, she went absolutely nuclear. This cheater, likes to show off who he cheated with. Did I mention, his side chick is married already? The aftermath of this revenge was never meant to go nuclear, but it did. Lastly, cheating wife finds her dream candy in the gym. But when she took a bite, it ends up being outrageously overpriced. Tell the like button that it's being such a Christmas Grinch, even Hello Kitty, said goodbye. The following story is a royal AI exclusive, and told from a female's perspective. I'll take you with me on my cheating revenge story. For me, these two parts are really two separate stories. Because one part broke my heart, the other offered some healing. I'll let you guess, which one is which. My story starts with my 14-year-old marriage. I believed we've always been a good couple, we talk, we had been through difficulties and it made our relationship stronger. I never had a connection to someone as to my husband. Our family unit felt strong, as we have two energetic boys that are twins, aged five. We both had good jobs and even had little family traditions we kept honoring. But as good as it all seemed to be, I had to horrifyingly find out, that my husband, the father of my children, has been cheating on me. If you live with someone for over a decade, you get to know each other's way of doing things, especially when raising kids together. My husband was the kind of guy that didn't touch his phone that often. But all of a sudden, he would grab his phone more often and stay glued to it like a teenager's on socials endorphins. I had gotten gimps of his phone, and became suspicious of the late night texts he had been receiving. To collect information on who exactly he had been talking to and what they had been talking about, I installed a specific app on his phone one night, while he was sleeping. Morally not so awesome, but I did so as a last resort. I did some research on this app, but I won't mention it here. It's an app that allows you to track someone's phone calls and messages. It sort of logs that data elsewhere. So when I went to check the app for the first time, I would have the data from the day before. I waited before opening it, I contemplated just deleting the app. I must be overly worried and I have to trust my husband. We've been together for 14 years. He would never. After three days, I thought about the differences, the gut feeling I had, how he became way more interested in working out and doing spare time activities, without me or people we both knew. I had to check for my sanity, and there it was. Not just enough on his cheating. She's a married woman too. They talk buying Christmas presents. They have nicknames for each other, he calls her precious, which still makes me cringe. There's more, she gives him tips on his outfit and looks. They seem to have the time of the world like teenagers, as I scroll through days worth of texts. I even saw a sweet compliment he sent her, which was identical to one he sent me too. Seriously? He said. When I think about my future, I can only smile, because I'm spending it, with you. I remember how I felt so loved when I received it at work. For him to send me this, affirming our love. Remember, I was not only naive, I trusted my husband I've been with for over 14 years. We both love our kids, but we would jokingly fantasize about spending time together in peace, when they are old enough to leave the nest. So these sweet words, really hit home when I first received them. So what about her reaction when she received the exact same compliment? She replied. After two years of struggling, I can't wait for us to be free. My hands shake while I continue, I'm not just sad, I'm furious. I remember feeling the pressure build up, from my chest to throat. I know I'm a good wife, I had this man's back since before we were married. He is my first and was my only one, he must have known this would devastate me. But there it is, he casually sends her hearts with a declaration of love, and the cherry on top, a recording of them both having a sexy time chat session. The timestamp showed that it happened while I was at work. Their ugly faces said enough, I didn't need or want to hear it. My husband and this woman were, clearly in love, and they had planned a vacation, two weeks before Christmas. How is he planning to do that, with plans within our family, 
the kids, and me? I couldn't see back far enough, so I only had the chat of the days previously. Doesn't matter really. I've seen enough and clearly have enough, to nuke them both into oblivion. He's a good liar and actor, I give him that. Did I mention, this is how I discovered how petty I can be, when I'm betrayed. Well he was about two. In the morning, he would kiss me goodbye and tell me to enjoy my day, get into his car and call the other woman, immediately. That previous night I didn't have any sleep, but I stayed up with adrenaline and did enjoy my free day, by working really hard. I sent the kids to kindergarten and first focused on the formal arrangements. I contacted a lawyer and started the divorce process. I made sure I wouldn't be wasting my time with this parasite, longer than I had to. I have to add that I like to be organized, sometimes obsessively so. But in this case it was a great advantage, as he wouldn't suspect anything, if I neatly organized all essentials for me and the boys for a short trip to my sister. That night I waited till midnight. Took his phone again and proceeded with my petty plan. I deliberately looked for and found, the ugliest screenshot that I could find of the already married cheating woman, and uploaded it onto his socials. I left a caption with the picture, saying he was promoting her, as his new side chick. I also changed his profile picture, to one of the woman surrounded by hearts and a nice Christmas themed mistletoe emoji, just for good measure. Their so-called relationship seemed open to me, as she said it had been two years? So I changed the relationship status to open. I did it swift and cold. I turned the ringer to silent for the inevitable incoming calls, and changed his password to lock him out of his phone. I then placed it back by his, bedside as he slept, and left a note in his car that said, he needed to find a new place to live. I also left the business card of my divorce attorney attached to the note. Packed all of our kids' belongings up, in case I needed to go to my sister, took them to kindergarten and went to work, where I waited. At work, I imagined how it all would play out. Him waking up and finding himself locked out of his phone, disrupting his daily routine of sharing words with his affair partner. Only to run to his car, to see the notes I had left him. It brought me great joy, to know that he would be forced to go to our neighbor's house, and ask to borrow their phone, where he would call me up and, either apologize or most probably, demand the password. And when he did, I could only give him the hint. You already know what the password is. As I'm sharing my story with you, I want to tell you that I continued with this genius wordplay, to play with the situation he was in. But I didn't, I couldn't say anything more, before hanging up. When he replied with my name and asked what I'm doing, I just froze. As reality hit me, I'm in the same situation, as are our boys. Our kids, what do I tell them? More than 14 years, we had everything and he betrayed us, for a married woman that would cheat herself. In the end, the pieces sort of fell into their place during the weeks to months after. My ex-husband didn't stay at our house, so we didn't need to move out. I guess he stayed with the cheating wife, as some days after the incident, the husband of the cheating woman, would ask for more details on the sordid affair and if I could provide him with proof. He seemed like a good man in the way he approached me. He was very respectful towards me and even apologized for his ex-wife. He politely offered to keep contact if I ever had any questions from his side and I did the same, but we never spoke again after this time. During that one, conversation, I learned they had no children together. He worked in IT and had to go abroad a lot for the company he shared with his brother. He said that he did all he could, to give her the good life. She didn't work a steady job, but he supported her dream to become an influencer on health products. I can't name the product here, but it looks like a famous pyramid scheme to me, so good luck with that honey. He gave up on having children, because she had always despised them. Last month, I've heard through the friendly grapevine, that she's pregnant but single. Good luck with that too. The revenge I had planned out, had abruptly stopped the affair that plagued two marriages for two whole years. One of 14 years with kids involved. For the fallout affecting our kids, it shouldn't. Other than his cheating broke our family unit. I don't plan on telling them about this anytime soon. They will find out when they are old enough. Till that time, their parents just didn't work out. I want them to grow up loving their dad. They shouldn't be hurt by this any more than already. The socials part shouldn't be a factor either, as we currently don't live anywhere near the place we lived and within that social community. I'm not proud of what I did, but even if it was purely emotional when I did it, I'm glad I got it over with. We're on good terms now and share custody. I moved on and met someone who is great with the kids. The cheating couple from paradise went on their vacation the year after. Couldn't keep their relationship going for a month before they went their separate ways. When I was still single, he tried to get back with me multiple times when picking the kids up. Bringing flowers or apologizing with promises to try again for the kids. 
how intoxicated he was by the manipulation of that evil woman and that he had no chance. There's simply no way, weakling. Yes, I chose him to be the dad of my children, and we brought two beautiful things in the world. But I'm only able to talk to him if it's directly about the kids. His life seems to be way less comfy than it used to be when we were together, and listening to the stories my kids tell me when they get back from their dad, there's so much childish drama in his life, that I don't recognize the man he once was. It's been years now. I hope he finds someone steady. If not, he can still try acting, or selling health products online in a pyramid scheme. <laughs> also, I would like to add that I shared my story with Royal AI directly, as I'm an enjoyer of his videos and it made me think of sharing my story. I will not go into debt in the comment section. As he asked me, because my kids still don't know their dad cheated, and I don't want to get into it much further. I want you all to know, that I'm in a great place now and so are my kids. I will read the comments though, so thank you in advance. I started dating a girl about 7 years ago. When we met, she was getting up on her feet and trying to find her way in life. I let my imagination take over and started envisioning her potential, and what kind of life we would have together. I had the feeling of punch drunk love for her, and that probably clouded my judgment. Throughout our time together, she would reach out and ask for money for things. Like repairing a car, paying a bill, etc. We were getting closer the longer we dated, and I would always help her, assuming that I was making an investment in both of our lives by helping her through a period of instability. In all, I probably gave her about $15,000. After about 4 years of this, I finally popped the question. She accepted and we were married after a brief engagement. About 6 months into our marriage, she told me she had been having car trouble and needed about $2,000 for the repair. This struck me as a bit odd. By that time, I was more than familiar with her vehicle and knew her explanation for what the issue was, didn't make sense. One evening after she went to sleep, I went and had a look at the part of the car she had said was faulty. I found that there was no issue. This set off alarms. I grabbed her phone and, on a hunch, typed in the amount she had asked for. There it was, a text message with a guy who looked familiar. It was a guy she had previously dated. Apparently he had reached out and asked for help repairing his car, and lo and behold, he had asked for the same amount she had requested from me. My stomach turned, as the thought entered my mind that maybe I had subsidized other expenses this guy had, across the time I had dated my wife. As I read through the messages further, I realized that I had been played like a fool. I had spent my entire relationship as a proxy sugar daddy. I thought on this for a few weeks and tried to figure out what to do next. These sacrifices were not insignificant to me. I had, been working as a surgical resident for much of our courtship, making very little money and working long hours to form a strong, solid foundation for our future. This was devastating, and I realized that I couldn't reconcile the situation. Once I had cooled down, I waited for an evening my wife went to bed early, and I got into her phone. I caught up on the most recent messages she and her paramour had sent one another. Then I initiated a conversation with him. I posed as her and told him she had been drinking, she is a recovering alcoholic, and that she needed to get some things off her chest. I didn't go overboard, but I did send messages to the effect that she was not over him, and that her affections had grown since marrying me. I buttered him up to move in for a relationship with her. I then abruptly ended the chat and asked that we not talk about the conversation again in order to avoid furthering her relapse, but that we both keep in mind what we had spoken about and see if we could make a life together work. I then deleted the texts from her phone and hoped the two would proceed forward together. They did. I kept an eye on the texts for the next few months, and progressively saw things heat up between them, until it looked like she was committed to leaving me. We didn't have many assets together at the time, as I was still finishing a surgical residency, so I knew the divorce would be quick and painless and that we would go our separate ways. And it would be great if she would start a new life, with the underachieving guy, who has been a parasite to my funds. So I filed for divorce and had her served papers. I was generous with the $10,000 in assets between us in order to make the split as quick as possible, and went on our ways to begin life anew. And you'd think that is the end of the story, right? Oh no, friend. You see, mama didn't raise a simp. In our state, not only are assets separated upon marital severance, but so, are debts. And did you know, medical school is extremely expensive. Like, really expensive. A quarter of a million dollars expensive. So, my dear cheating wife, ended up with a parting gift of about $125,000 of my student loans. And guess who she shotgun married, two months after our divorce? Fortunately for her, she'll only have to pay half of that amount 
because if history does indeed repeat itself, he'll be paying the other half, once their marriage ends as well. It was all I could do, to not send them a piggy bank as a wedding gift. Best $15,000, I ever spent. The following story, is told from a female's perspective. I only have one rule when dating. And that rule is something I take quite seriously. It's more a personal rule than anything religious. So I was living in a small Muslim country at this time, and while Islam wasn't enforced, it is a big part of their culture. I met this guy, let's call him Amir. He is Muslim, but doesn't follow the religion that much. We met through a friend of a friend, or something like that. He drove a nice sports car of that time, a Nissan Silvia S15. Coincidentally, he also played badminton with my uncle. So I thought all was well and good a couple months into our romantic fairy tale, until one of my friends found something out and told me. I hate to break this to you, but that guy is actually engaged already. Of course, me being the romantic and dumbass, I had already fallen hard for this guy, so when I heard this new bit of information it sent my head for a spin. I was angry, heartbroken, embarrassed that I was showing him off around town, all that. That same afternoon, I received a phone call. From his fiance. I explained to her that I had no idea he was engaged and to my surprise, she didn't seem too upset or even mad at me. Apparently, this is the third time he's done this to her and this girl kept taking him back. I thought, she's the type of girl that would keep forgiving a guy like him and will be used as a doormat. And he's the type of guy, that's not willing to learn and doesn't even care. What about me? If she chooses to accept his cheating, it doesn't mean I have to. He broke my trust, and my only rule. So you can judge me if you want, but I felt it was justified, and chose to set up a plan. I called him and kept my cool, by acting as my usual chipper self. I asked to meet up with him that evening, and that I had a special surprise, just for him. Amir agreed to meet up. After this, I called the fiancé and asked if she would be willing to meet up in person and talk about the situation. When she agreed, I made sure to pick her up shortly before I would be meeting with him. I picked her up at the location where she was at. We talked in the car and the awkward tension, traded places with a common goal. She was okay with meeting up with Amir, together. So we went to the location Amir would meet me, and when we got there, I waited outside of the car, while she stayed inside. When he arrived some parking spaces away, I walked towards him while unleashing the truth on him. I told him I knew he was engaged. As expected, he didn't really care and didn't deny it. His attitude was more like, he couldn't be bothered with it. I told him that he didn't come for nothing, and that he's still getting the surprise I promised him. His attitude changed from acting all arrogant and douchey, to being curious, and still being a giant douche. I told him, go get your surprise, it's in the car. He walked towards the car and when he looked in, she clicked the door open. Bamboozled. Fight or flight kicks in. Of course, he takes of running towards his car. But I blocked him by standing between him and his car door. She gets out of the car, and takes the discussion to a whole new level by unleashing a bigger storm on him. They proceeded to get into a huge fight and I get to watch it unfold. Apparently, this girl is more than just his innocent doormat fiancé. She was his golden nugget, as she paid for his car, his phone and all their combined expenses. While arguing, she cries and walks towards him to take his phone from him. Then proceeds to walk towards the car in a way you can definitely tell, she's the one paying for it. She opens the trunk and grabs some stuff, I don't know what it was. She's intensely angry and sad, he starts wimpy crying. I was just enjoying the show. Once it was all over, she was in my car again and told me to bring her home. This woman, was not the doormat I expected her to be. I agreed to bring her, home and asked her to give me the directions to her house. I added that I wasn't done with Amir yet. She didn't react as she didn't care, but when she gave me the address of her home, she told me that her home, is Amir's address. Apparently, she was living there with him and his family, which is normal where we're from. And even better for me. When we arrived at his place, the mom opened the door and saw the fiancé crying and asked what was wrong. The fiancé was kind of hysterically crying, so the mom started crying too. Amongst the tears she asked me. Who, are you? I said, hi, I'm pregnant with your son's baby. Enter more tears and hysterical emotions. We went inside and I sat at the table, as more family members started to roll in. The dad was sullen and kept apologizing as he knew my family, and the mom was sobbing with the fiancé. Finally, he came home, absolutely shocked to see me there. He didn't try to run this time. He just sat down and took the heat. 
the parents being Muslim and traditional, asked if I would marry his son and I said, I'd rather raise my kid a bastard, than be around your son. More crying ensued, anger turned into rage, and it was solely aimed towards Amir. His dad then got up, disowned his son and apologized again, saying he didn't raise his kid to be like this. By this time, I had probably been there for at least an hour and was getting bored, so I decided to leave. As I was leaving, through tears, he asked me. Why are you doing this? And I replied, I told you in the beginning, I have one rule, and if you break it, you'll regret it. I saw them about four years later at the mall, and they were back together. Hopefully he never cheated again. About the baby, turned out, I was just constipated. <laughs> this happened almost 10 years ago, so even if dots get connected, I know I'm safe within the laws of my country. This didn't actually happen to me, but I'm the one, who carried out the revenge. My last year of middle school, I introduced my best friend, whom I'm gonna call Lily, to one of my arts classmates, who I'm gonna call Crappy. They dated for around 7 years, all through high school and university, until she found out right after graduation, Crappy had been cheating on her with his classmate from university. Her name was Michelle. Lily and Crappy took language lessons at a small school next to a big shopping mall, and after their breakup, I went there with her so she could cancel her classes. I'd been giving her grand speeches, about how karma would take care of teaching him a lesson, all to help her feel better. After being done with cancellation fees, papers and all, we went into the mall for a feel better dessert. But we never expected how that would unfold. Guess who was there at the food court? Crappy, who spotted me and Lily right away, and he was there with Michelle, who looked as white as a ghost. Crappy literally dragged Michelle towards us. She and Lily were both frozen because, well, could you imagine someone would actually do this? He forced Michelle, who clearly wanted to be anywhere but there, to greet Lily. He then asked Lily, Are you seriously, not gonna talk to me? All the while with a disgusting grin. I pulled Lily from there without a word, we left the mall, walked to the bus stop, all in silence. After I had digested what had just happened, I told Lily, you know what I said about life? Forget it, it's gonna take too long. I know what I did afterwards was questionable, and only later would I realize how catastrophic it could have been. Lily still had access to Crappy's accounts. But so did he to hers. As soon as we got home, she'd been staying with me since the breakup, I made her change all her passwords, and asked her for his emails. That's all I wanted. In our country, WhatsApp is the most used social media, and we often set it to backup daily into our Google Drive or Gmail. Crappy had his backup on Gmail. I started going through two years worth of conversation with Michelle, complete with pics and audio files, and took out the most interesting parts. Such as them talking about sexy time in the restrooms and emergency exit at Crappy's work during his shift, bragging about how they blinded their significant others, while having their escapades. Yes, you heard that right, she also was in a relationship. But it was even worse from her side, because as it turns out, Michelle was married. Now, I was going to send the clippings of doom to Crappy's family, did I mention he was their golden boy, but I got a better idea after learning how deep their betrayal actually went. So I tracked down Crappy's boss on LinkedIn, got his work email, found Michelle's husband online and, using a throwaway account, sent them the present. Heard through the grapevine Crappy got fired, but cried, literally, for a second chance, and was on probation at work already. So one more Crappy move from Crappy, and bye bye Not the outcome that I wanted, but I'll take it. And it will help healing my friend Lily. Fast forward a few months, I was talking to my cousin and she was telling me about how her fiancé's colleague was traveling all over the world, and he recently posted some pictures at a bar made of ice, and she wanted to travel there too. She showed me the picture the guy had posted. Lo and behold, traveling colleague was Michelle's ex-husband, Rick. I asked her how she knew Rick, and she told me he was her fiancé's friend and work colleague. I didn't tell her about my shenanigans, only said Rick's ex-wife and my best friend's ex had cheated on her and inconspicuously, I hope, asked my cousin how Rick was, how it must have been a sad breakup for him, and DID, she spilled the tea. So, Michelle had introduced Rick to Crappy during her graduation ceremony a few weeks before I sent the present, saying, Look darling, this is the friend, who helped me with my graduation project. Rick had allowed Crappy and Michelle to use his computer at home for said project, turns out they were sexy timing in his home, while he was working tirelessly, to pay for her sorry one. And imagine this, she actually made him shake hands with her lover. 
Rick was a programmer, Michelle was from the countryside, and she'd been living in the city with him for a few years. Rick wasn't only working a lucrative sector, he was a very hard worker indeed, so he had an awesome salary. He paid for everything, so Michelle could focus on her studies and finishing university. But one day, he received some evidence his wife was cheating on him, with the guy he'd shaken hands with. The same guy he allowed to use his computer, in his house, to help his wife, do her graduation project. At this moment, he knew that the guy was not helping by doing some project, but actually doing something else. Like his lovely wife. Rick got her graduation dress, threw it in the flames of the fireplace, shoved her into the car, drove all the way to her family's home in the countryside. Reportedly, took her into her parents' house and made her tell her mother and father what she'd been doing. I've heard that the way he was doing this, was excessive. Her father was so distressed, he had a minor stroke, and her mother kicked her out and cut her off from the family. As far as I know, last I checked was five years ago, they were still not in contact. Rick threw her out of his house, she moved in with Crappy's family. And Rick, now with his salary and being free of his cheating ex, was living la vida loca, going to ice bars in neighboring countries. I have to admit, when I did what I did, I was feeling desperate. I didn't intend for it to go as far as it did. Had Rick been 1% matter, he could have done worse things than only throwing her dress into the fire. Her father could have passed after my interference. I didn't calculate how Rick could react at all. I called Lily, told her all about it, lost my sleep over it for weeks. I even considered confessing to what I did. Lily asked me to let it go, what was done was done. She asked me to take this as a lesson, and let life run its course the next time, as I'd initially said it would. I'm not proud of it, and even though I don't lose sleep over it anymore, I still feel somewhat guilty. Confessing here is kind of cathartic though. I don't know how to react for others, but both Crappy and Michelle got what they deserved. I always felt like Crappy deserved worse than he got, but it was Michelle who drew the shorter straw. She actually made her husband shake hands with Crappy though. This could have ended way worse. All you did was provide evidence of cheating. How people react to that is on them, not you. The only way it could possibly be your fault is if you knew they could react in a bad way and fake the evidence to force them into an action. Panicking about all the possible could-haves isn't helpful either. It will just lock you into an endless cycle of being paralyzed by the worst-case scenario. It's fine to worry about the most common or obvious could-haves, but don't go too far. Her cheating cost her dad's mini-stroke, not you. I'm sure Crappy got his too, but you were only updated on one side of the story. 10 out of 10, you're a ride-or-die friend. I caught my wife cheating on me with some other guy, whom she met at the gym. I had built the house we lived in from the ground up, and was smart enough to have bought and installed a surveillance system that not only covered the entire yard, but the inside of the house as well. The system included HD video, audio recording, and even came with night vision. I did not tell her about the system, and she never suspected that she was being watched inside the house. I caught her calling the guy and giving him our address and inviting him over to sexy time, in her own words. Everything was caught on camera, with audio to boot, and I made sure to make extra copies and save them as evidence. The next day, she went to work as if nothing happened. I left for work as I normally do, but once I was away from the house, I called my boss and told them I was taking a few days off. I've been with this company for over 12 years and was good friends with the owner, so he had no problem with me taking time off. This is when I initiated my plan. The first thing I did, was to call all her credit cards and cancel them. Since I paid for everything and they were in my name, I had no problem getting those cancelled. The next thing I did was to take the money from our joint checking account out, to put it into my own personal checking account. I then collected all of her clothes, jewelry, shoes, etc., and stuffed them into garbage bags and tossed them into my truck. I had a couple of buddies meet me that morning at the house to help me out. I also changed the codes to get into the house, locking her out. We finished loading everything into my truck and one of my buddy's trucks and left the house. The first stop was at her job, where I used the extra key to her car to get in and drive it away back to my house while my buddy followed in my truck. The car was in my name and I was not going to let her have it. We then drove to her mom's house which was about an hour away, and left all her stuff on her mom's porch. I explained to her mom and sister what she did and that it was over, and I didn't want her in my house anymore. 
It took about 20 minutes after leaving her mom's house, before I got the first phone call from my now ex. I ignored her phone calls until about call number 10. By this point, she was screaming at the top of her lungs about her stuff being dumped at her mom's house. She demanded an explanation and started threatening to call the police. I laughed, and sent her proof that was caught on the home surveillance camera. The crap really hit the fan, when she got off work and discovered that her car was no longer there. She had to have her mom pay for an Uber to carry her back home, since none of her credit cards worked and her debit card was useless. I continued to receive regular phone calls for the next 3-4 to four days, which I ignored. I kept her car in the garage, where it sits to this day. I've driven it a grand total of twice, and I am thinking of selling it once it's paid off. She never bothered coming back to the house. I've heard that she had a lot of blowback from her family regarding her, extracurricular activities. She was forced to get a full-time job to make ends meet, since she was only working part-time when she was living with me. I have since moved on and dated a couple of times, but I'm holding off getting into something serious, until I can find somebody I can truly trust. Subscribe for future uploads and show your vengeful devotion, by tickling the like button, without mercy. Thank you, I appreciate you, because you stayed till the end, which means you're the one I make these episodes for. I hope you all had a great Christmas, and I wish you the best for next year. Let's make it an awesome year together. Take care, Royal. Remember that these stories are shared for your entertainment. This content is to be taken as such, and nothing else. Royal AI, rejects advocation or instigation of illegal actions.